mga kaisunan, mga kahigalaan, kumusta? Ang atong programa, ang kalibulungan ng plano sa Diyos, ang sunod na usap sa pagsipagsan ng ito panimalay, sunod sa usap ka oras at tunga. Kini ang programa, isponsoran sa Mindanao Grace, Eternal Mission, ang gusto pagdumala ni Pastor Babreo, disiportaran usap sa mga lokal na kasimbahanan sa Davao Region. Grace Christian Church at Kandara Kumunal Tibung Pagawa City Grace Christian Church Chadim Subdivision Panago Davao del Norte Grace Christian Church Tugwak Lidwak Babak Island Garden City of Samal Grace Christian Church Ola Los Amigos Davao City Grace Christian Church uh, Overview Milan Davao City Bisama sa Grace Christian Church New Bisaya Santo Tomas Davao del Norte. Yeah, the Adios of Tinis at People's Radio and Broadcasting Services, DHXM 97.7 FM Radio, uh, bringing Christian faith to life. Obo sa pagdumala ni Pastor Mike News, uban sa iyang mga biyabiho ng mga personal, DJWell, DJGA, o DJGA. Kini ang inyong alagad sa kahanginan, Pastor Federico Andoy, Pastor Ruel Gallo, Matikuban ka ninyo sa loob lamang sa usaka oras o tunga. Amahan nga balaan, salamat o Diyos sa imong pagkagrasyoso. Salamat sa grasya sa panahon, ngayon ang itugot na sa karon. Araw makapadaing kami sa pagtuon na sa imong kulong. Gabita kami o Diyos, ipasupidi sa imong kapuyuan. Na ikaw Diyod ang masinto, nining tanan, nining mga bulutaw na. O nag-apraya po sa mga uh, kaigsunan karon kung asa mo sila napita, nag-apamati ng ining programa. Ako nag-apraya mga sa teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit na mga ay magpasabot o magpatayag sa mga puro ng pagpapatbaton karon ng kapunan. Tugyan ako diya kanimo ang mga nahabilin yung oras. In Christ we pray. Amen. Kaya ang pulong sa Diyos, buhi o maaptik, Huwag mas hayi pa kaysa sa nungsang ispada ng nagaisulat. Mudulog kini hangtod sa kinahilagman sa kalag o sa espiritu. Hangtod sa dapit di nagabot ang lutahan o ang kauyukan. Nag-usisa kini sa mga tinguha o una-una sa kasingkasing sa tao. Walang butang na matago, likad sa Diyos. Ang tanan, dayat magkita sa iyang mga mata. O kitang tanan maghatag kaniya ang kusay sa atong mga binuhatan. Okay, so uh, karoon ang kinikita sa atong padayon ng pagtuon sa pulong sa Diyos. Mga kaisunan, wala pa kita mahumang sa kanonicity na paghihapon kita karoon sa kitawag na itong mga informative, no? Uh, kasi nahatagan uh, ang kinik panahon ni Pastor Uwe at ang kanonicity sa katuyuan nga doon na kita'y information o nga nung uh, nag-canonize ang itawag na ito scripture from Genesis to the book of Revelation. O nga nung uh, ang apokripa, ap- apokripal mo wala na ito na appeal, ginadawat isip kabahin sa itawag na ito uh, canonical books na itawag na ito 66 books sa Biblia. So, informative po diha kung kita kung sa uh, bear with us, no? Kami ni Pastor Ruel, uh, padahil pa kami ini, among ginabasa kini ang uh, atong mga pag, uh, pagtudlo karon o uh, gina-expose ng gamay ang mga area na hindi dapat na ito na ma- masabtan dyan. Okay, uh, <coughs> ang hihatag ng Pastor Ruel ang the history of the New Testament canon. Okay, maayong kapon pag-usap mga Ikson. I hope nga dili ka mo mabaguhan sa among sistema karon sa pagtudlo ni Pastor Freddy, no? Kay uh, sa gikaingon na ni Pastor Freddy, napakita karon sa gitawag og informative, no? O uh, kung mapaminawan nato ni mga Ikson, na pinagito nga paminaw uh, mga 3 Saturdays nga nilabay dari gyud nato maki mabalyo kung unsa gyud ka lisod ug kabililhon ang Biblia di ay 
no? Yun sa siya pag iusa, no? Pag-compile. Pag-compile. From many books to one book na ba ang Bible. Pero tinglisura yun, no? Ang pag-retrieve ni ining mga sinulat niya. Grabe yung grab, grab paghako sa mga Bible scholars. No? Yes. Ilahad yung gihaguan kini, ilahad yung gipalikamutan kini nga uh, makumpile. Mm-hmm. O kita, kita ka ron, dawat libyo na lang ka. Lisit kita. Nagpaslamat kita kanila, no? utang nga ito lisit sa ilaha. Yes. Na naghagod nito makumpile ang punong sa Diyos. So, mm-hmm. okay. Pero, ang um, kuwan pag hindi ni Pastor Robert, si kita dawat libyo na ka, hindi ni pag hindi kaya na ito uh, na-appreciate o hindi ni kaya na ito binatungan. No? Uh, oh, yes. Well, Uh, dapat mag-challenge kita no? na sila naghagok yun din sa pagkulit, pangita ang ganini kaasam ng mga sinulat na din na, eh, na compile nila sa so, sasawa ka ron mo na lang ang pagtuon mm-hmm. uh, pag uh, ayun sa pag uh, susi sa mga pagtuon ang gaya sa pagtuon sa Diyos pero sad to say Pastor Fred nowadays yun no? sa mga panahon ka ron pipila na lang yun kayo nagka-interest din yung Biblia? Tinuot ka na, Pastor Ruel, no? Wala uh, yung tagahid ako pagtagad ba? In fact, ang Israel ka rin, Pastor Ruel, di na ka pwede nga mabaw, mabasa sa uh, puno sa Diyos. Sabi na isang yun mo si Tres Pesos nga to sa ilahang uh, mga lapit. Nagbuhat na sila balaot niya na ay doon natin kung gano'n sa kanang implement. Apo nanay attempt niya. Kung yung magkatanaon, Uh, murag nag uh, padulong na yun sa pag uh, padayag sa gitawag na itong anti-Kristo Pastor Roy. Kaya hindi naging ipawali si Kristo Pastor Roy. Kana kay mm-hmm. ni Butho na may doon ang adikrito, mabot sa ng panahon nga, kopyaho na po na sa mga laing nasod. Uh, padulong na sa mga mga nasod na yes. usap. Yes, hangtod nga, wala na yun. Uh, wala na yun tayo uh, abing yun na makatoon o baka pakli niya ng sinulat ng mga ang Biblia. O, oh, yun na siguro kita maguna-una ang importante atong pusong sa Diyos, no? At kapalbiya po ng mga ito. Kapalbiya po ng mga ito, no? Mm-hmm. Karoon nung pa, nga napay panahon kita, napay chansa, karoon nung panahon niya magpagayon yung kita sa pag-tuki, pag-susi, pag-tuon, pag-studio sa pulong sa Diyos. Oo. Oh, oh. Kaya napay panahon. Time will come nga mahugdan na kita ang panahon. Una nga, dili na ito na hulaton. No? Kaya nga naman, kinipulong sa ginoo atong ibutang up here, no? dili na sa atong alimpatakan, sa atong nang ipinosis. Sa atong kalag. Kaya mabot ang panahon nga dili na pagpakilin ini, pagtoon ini, at least nga na nagitay na sabtas pulong sa ginoo. Tumalot ka na, Pastor Ruel. Okay. So, ano yung nakita sa the history of the New Testament canon, no? So, nanak- na kita sa apokripal, no? Yes. So, narakita ka ron sa the history of the New Testament canon. The canon of scripture would be in- incomplete without the writings of the New Testament. The history of the New Testament canon can be divided into three periods. The first period began in 70 AD with the fall of Jerusalem. 70 to 170 AD was the period of a circulation of the separate New Testament writings among the churches under gradual collection into one book, the New Testament canon up to the time the poor communication systems plus the Pre- preference of the pe- of the people for oral testimony and face to face teaching of the apostles hindered the formation of the canon <coughs> we have number of historical statements of that early period regarding the canon for instance clement of rome 96 ad recognize the divine authority a divine authority of the new testament and often quoted from many of the epistles in the epistles of barnabas 
the writer quotes from both the, the Old and New Testaments. State, uh, state, uh, stating that this this were canonical another early uh, Christian work that was written in Greek the Didache also called the teaching of 12 apostles contains 23 quotations from Matthew and Luke alone declaring them to be divinely inspired there are still others of mention the canon. Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna. Papias, the Bishop of uh, Heracles, Hercules. Justin and Titan. Ignatius, the Bishop of Antioch. All quoted Matthew, John, and the Paul, uh, Pauline epistles and referred to them as scripture. From these men and their writings, we can establish the fact that formation of the New Testament canon was a foregone conclusion. The early, the early church fully recognized the authority of Christ and of the apostles giving the Gospels and the Epistles that same rank as the Old Testament Scriptures. They were read in their worship services and preserved in their archives. In 170 AD to 303 AD, this was the time of the early Church Fathers. Some of the well-known men of their day who historically referred to the canon were Eranius, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, and Origen. The fact of the existence of the New Testament canon was definitely and barely established. Now, a controversy began over certain New Testament books. Canon, canonicity of Second Peter was questioned since it was so different in style from Peter's first episode. They argued over Hebrews because no one could determine the author. No one really liked the epistles of James. Besides, they didn't know which James there are four mentions in the New Testament. Rote. Jude had to go along with Sikhan and Turjan because of their uh, brevity. As for Revelation, they could not decide whether the author was John the Apostle or John the Presbyter. This great debate went on from AD 303 to 394 until the problems were finally resolved. As in the case of the Old Testament, there was an attempt to infiltrate a number of pre previously rejected writings into the canon of the New Testament. This included the Acts of Paul and the Tikla and the Epistle of Barnabas. You will recall this was discovered by Tischendor at St. Catherine Monastery in Sinai. There was the Gospel of Thomas and the Acts of Andrew. Both read like the proverbial time novel. So here too some criteria had to be set up to specify once and for all which books were to be excluded and which were to be included in the New Testament. The criteria for the New Testament canonicity. Number one, apostolic, apostolicity. Apostolicity. Every book of the New Testament must either be write, uh, written by an apostle or someone closely associated with an apostle. Mark was under Peter and Luke was associated with Paul. Receptions by the churches. The books must be universally received by the local churches as authentic at the time of their writing. Number three, consistency. 
they must be consistent with the doctrine that the church already possessed, namely the Old Testament and apostolic <coughs> teaching. Inspiration. Each book must give evidence internally and externally of being divinely inspired. The spiritual gift of discernment was used to determine canonicity. We found it in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. Number five, recognition. Each must be recognized as canonical in the catalogs of the church fathers and must be used by those who had the gift of pastor teacher. Eternal. To be canonical, its book must contain exhortation to public exegesis of the word. That is Colossians 4.16, 1 Thessalonians 5, 27, 1 Timothy 4.13, Revelation 1.3, Revelation 2.7, Revelation 2.11, Revelation 2.17, Revelation 2.29, Revelation 3.6, of this amount for Revelation 13. Also, Peter famous statement of the end of the second epistle. Although Paul had thoroughly braced Peter in Galatians 2, 6 to 14, Peter places Paul's writing on a par with the Old Testament scriptures. Second Peter 3, 15 to 16. 303 to 379 A.D. Largely <coughs> instrumental in determining the extent of the canon were two events in his history. <coughs> the Diocletian persecution <coughs> during which every attempt was made to destroy the scriptures <laughs> and the emperor Constance, Constantine ordered for 50 copies of the Bible for use in the churches of Constantinople. It was during this final period <clears throat> and in the years shortly there, thereafter that the great church councils were healed they resulted in the formation, ratification of the canon, which by then had been in existence for several hundreds of years. Eusebius, in 270 AD to 340 AD, this great historian, as a trusted friend of Emperor Constantine, enjoyed access to all the church archives he promptly set about record the history of the church. With scholarly precision, he set up a system for classifying the New Testament books. This will eventually solve the entire problem of canonicity. He used the same categories that were set up for the classification of the Old Testament. The acknowledged books or known as Homo Lo Domina. Into this first category, Eusebius placed the four Gospels, Acts, the 14 Pauline uh, Epistles, 1 Peter, 1 John, and Revelation. Regarding Revelation, he started that each place in this category was doubted by some. And then, qualified this remark with a question mark. <clears throat> the disputed box until Gomina. The next category was made up of bona fide scriptural books that had been a source of disputation. We have already seen the objections of, to James, first and second Peter and second and third John. It is interesting to learn that Martin Luther called James a right destroying epistle. He would have thrown it out of the canon. Could he have done so? 
Hebrews was not mentioned at this time. It had been accepted upon the decision that there must have been some good reason why the author remained anon. The spurious writings, Apocrypha. <clears throat> As in the case of the Old Testament, there was a New Testament Apocrypha, which included the Acts of Paul, the Epistles of Barnabas, the Shepherd of Hermas, the Revelation of the Twelve, and the Revelation of Peter. If you think that some of our uh, modern cults are way out, you should read the Revelation of Peter. The heretical or absurd writings called Sodi Pigripa. This fourth category contains most of the known forgeries among them the Gospel of Peter, the Gospel of Thomas, the Acts of Andrew, the Church Councils. About this time, it was decided that a church council should be called to settle the matter of the canon once and for all. There were four seasons, the Council of Laodicea, 336 AD, the Council of Damascus, 382 AD, the Council of uh, uh, Carthage, 397 AD, the Council of Hypo, 498 AD. The Council of Laodicea recognized and accepted all books of New Testament canon except Revelation. But all the following three councils, Revelation was accepted. As far as canonicity is concerned, one of the greatest things ever, <coughs> ever to be discovered was the Morochan Flagment. This was found in the Ambrosian Library, Milan, in 1740 by, by a, library, a library, uh, librarian named Moratori. Although it was a multitude of both ends, the fragment showed that cataloging of the New Testament was being done as early as the 2nd century. This particular index, a card index, of the book of the ancient world lists all the New Testament books beginning with Luke, referred to as the Third Gospel. <coughs> it omits Hebrews, James, the epistles of Peter, and Second and Third John. The unknown writer then goes to great length to distinguish between the writings which should be accepted by true believers and those which should be rejected. The question of canonicity never came up again until the rise of liber liberalism in 19th century, which led to our 20th century modernization. All this background information is necessary in order that you might know how we acquired the Bible in its present form. Now let us go to the early history of English translation. Caedmon died in 680. The Bible in the English language is not as new as some may think. It has a history that goes back to a stable boy turned singer by the name of Caedmon. He became known as the first English Christian poet. It seems that Caedmon was a member of the Abbey at Whiteby and apparently also soloist in the choir. In those days, Latin was the official language of England, although the common people spoke Anglo-Saxon. The aristocracy and priesthood spoke Latin and all church services were conducted exclusively in Latin. The common people never understood what was said or sung. Caedmon resented the condescending attitude of the aristocracy and determined that he would henceforth sing only 
in his own glorious Anglo-Saxon language. But what would he sing? Kaid Moon had a great idea. He would sing Bible stories in the language of the people. While Kaid Moon could neither read nor write, he found a monk who was sympathetic to his idea. The monk agreed to translate the first chapter of Genesis into Anglo-Saxon. Kaid Moon memorized the words, paraphrased them, and set them to music. He traveled all, all over the country, and wherever he went, he sang, In the beginning, God created. The response of the British people to hearing God's word in their own language was tremendous. Kaid Moon increased his repertory with accounts of the beginning of man, the stories of Genesis, the deliverance of the Jews from slavery in Egypt, Daniel and passages dealing with the resurrection, second advent, heaven and hell. Kaidmon is said to have been one of the greatest singers of the time. Was it his lyric inner that charmed his audience? Perhaps, but the real impact was the content of his message. The people were literally starving for God's word in their own language. It will never be known this side of heaven how many people found Jesus Christ as their Savior as they listen to the songs of this unique to ban to battle. <clears throat> Aldin, 640 to 709. News of the Kaidmons, Kaidmons and useful songs had spread to the south of England. <clears throat> Aldin, the Bishop of uh, Sherborne, a great Latin scholar and student of the classics, was also a poet in his own right. He had written prose mostly in the form of letters, riddles, and short poems. <coughs> Adams was so fascinated by the work which Kaid Moon had, had done that he decided to translate the Psalms into Anglo-Saxon. This work was finished before his death and published on a limited scale. BD in 647 AD to 735 AD, about one generation after Kaidmon, there lived a man who became known in English history as the Venerable BD. He was the most learned man and the most famous writer of Anglo-Saxon times. Although he wrote a number of Latin commentaries on many books of the Bible, his most substantial and noted work is Ecclesiastical History of England. B.D. was well acquainted with both Caedmon's and Alden's efforts. As a believer, he was convinced that the people needed a translation of the Gospel. After some deliberation, he settled on the Gospel of John and began work immediately for he knew his life was heading away. We are told that as he, uh, as he lay dying, he dictated the last verse of John's Gospel to his scribe. With his last breath, he said, weakly but happily, now my sons have the gospel in their own language. language. Thus another piece of the Bible in the language of the people had been realized. However, there would be no complete Anglo-Saxon Bible until the time of King Alfred, roughly in 150 years later. Alfred, that Alfred the Great, King of England, 871 to 901. is famous for many accomplishments. He not only drove the Danes out of England, but he also deserves the credit for giving his subjects the Bible in their native language. It is, inter in it is interesting to note that Alfred who did not learn to read or write until he was 12 
years old. Grew up to be a great king and a great scholar. scholar. So impressed was he by the grace of God and the scriptures that he wrote. I, Alfred, by God's grace, dignified <clears throat> with the title of king, have perceived and often learned from the reading of secret books that we, whom God hath given so much worldly honor, have particular need to humble and subdue our minds to the divine law. In an all-out effort to educate his these people, Alfred saw, saw to it that everyone learned to read this native Anglo-Saxon language. The, uh, the primer they used was a translation of the Bible, much of which was the king's own work. It was his wish that all preborn youth of his kingdom should employ themselves on nothing till they could first read well the English scriptures. This meant that a young man could neither serve in the army, enter business, nor follow a profession until he had passed a reading test based on the word of God. Under these conditions, it stands to reason that everyone in the realm would be eager to master the art of reading. In so doing, the reading of scripture became almost mandatory, and the Alfred subjects were without excuse. Romans 1.20 Never before was the Bible so easily available and so widely read. And we know, of course, that God's word shall not return to him void. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Now from 902 to 1380, Alfred the Great, uh, Alfred the Great, had left his people a great heritage. But unhappily things did not stay as he would have wished. In 1066 AD, the Normans invaded England. Actually, the Normans were Norsemen who had lived in France for some 200 years. By this time, they spoke a combination of Scandinavian and French. Once they had conquered England, the language of the country underwent a tremendous change. The Normans did not like the Anglo-Saxon language, and over a period of about 100 years, the two languages were blended into one totally different English. If you were to hear it spoken today, you would not have a clue as to what was being said. If that were not enough, the rise of the Romanism eventually began to supplant the great system which Alfred had instituted. The Vulgate, the Latin translation which spoke Damascus, the Mac Damascus had commissioned Jerome to make in 382, who became the common Bible of the people. Whitecliffe, 1330 to 1384. Let's skip down to the time of John Whitecliffe. A born-again priest who began <coughs> to see the inaccuracies of the Vulgate. Not only had the Apocrypha found its way into the Vulgate, but also many interpretations of Hebrew expository, exp uh, expositors had <coughs> been incorporated into the, into the text. Since the Alfred translation could no longer communicate and the Vulgate was unsatisfactory, Whitecliffe decided it was necessary for him to come up with a new translation. From his own study of scriptures, Whitecliffe strongly believed that Christ and his word alone were man's supreme authority. 
not the Church of Rome. He frequently attacked the Orthodox doctrine which the Rome Church, the, which the Roman Church had uh, formulated and insisted that all men had the right of access to the Scriptures. The Pope tried many times to put Wycliffe on the spot and finally condemned him as a heretic in 1380. Then Wycliffe published his English translation of the New Testament from the Latin. He was again condemned in 1382. When his Old Testament translation came out, this translation were a step in the right direction and would ultimately break the power of Ro Romanisms in England. Hence, Wycliffe became the forerunner of the Reformation. Uh, now, let us go to the life of Tindem, uh, William Tindem, in, uh, in 1494 to 1539. Nearly 200 years passed and again, the English language underwent drastic changes. At that time, William Tyndale, a linguistic genius, began work on still another translation of the Bible. I see this man was a genius because he mastered eight languages. He mastered Hebrew, Greek, Latin, Italian, French, Spanish, Dutch, and English. He wrote great literature in all these languages. Because of first persecution and opposition from the established church, William Tyndale was forced to flee to Germany. In a matter of months, his translation based on Erasmus, edition of the Greek New Testament was completed. His English translation of the New Testament was printed in part of Colon and Venice at Worms. In spite of the opposition by Cardinal Wolsey and King Henry VIII, 600 copies were smuggled back into England in 1526. The Tyndale Bible was promptly denounced and suppressed. While Henry VIII ruled over England, Charles V threw Inheritance reigned over most of Europe. Charles V was a zealous Catholic and violently hostile toward the Reformation movement. He instigated the arrest and death of Tyndale. Tyndale was found and seized at Antwerp, where he was secretly revising his translations. He was confined in prison in 1535, tried and convicted of heresy and condemned to be strangled and born at the stake in 1536. Just before he died, Tyndale looked toward heaven and cried out in prayer, Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. Why I am feeling you all this, so that you might know what it took to bring about the very freedoms we enjoy today, to own to read and to teach God's word without outside interference or coercion. Coverdale and Matthew's Bible. Tyndale was not the only one who worked on an English Bible. The <coughs> Coverdale Bible, which came out in 1535, five, five months better. It was even decided to the king. The Matthew's Bible, a combination of the Tyndale and the Coverdale translation, was published in 1537. This had been compiled and edited by John Rogers, who used the pseudonym of Thomas Matthew. Strangely enough, this was the first Bible authorized by the king for sale and for reading. Matthew's Bible formed the basis of all other re re revisions, including Great Bible 
the Genie, the Genie Bible, the Bishop Bible, and the King James Version. Now let us go to how we got our King James Version. Manali, padalong na ka sa King James Version. By now, the rift between Protestants and Catholics had widened considerably. In England, where Parliament consisted primarily of Puritans, Protestants, and Anglicans, the people began to talk about a new standard translation. James, I was on the throne, and it seems that Tyndale's prayer was being answered. It is necessary, however, that you understand some of the background connected to the reign of King James the first. Elizabeth, Queen of England, had a beautiful cousin, Mary Stuart, who had returned from France in 1561 to take her rightful place as Queen of the Scots. Scotland was in a state of turbulence, the clans, for, the clans fomented discounts, the new faith preached by John Knox, sweep across the chilling blocks, and Catholic's Mary was held in contempt not only for her presence in Scotland, but for her continuing claims to the Tudor crown of Elizabeth, then Mary unwisely married the Scottish Lord Darnley. This created further antagonism both to the English because of this Tudor connections and to the Scots because she was Catholic. The Scots had become Calvinistic in their beliefs and resented Mary's Romanism and the influence of their friends for The people were determined that never again should the Roman Church be allowed to gain and hold political power in their nation. After a series of indiscretions and acts of poor judgment, Mary was formed to uh, abdicate in favor of the infant son, who then became James VI of Scotland. Fleeing the wrath of the Protestant nobles, Mary sought refuge in England. Elizabeth was in wandering. She dared not to send Mary back to Scotland, for the Scots might execute their divine right monarchs. She was equally af af afraid to give her sanctuary in England, where Mary was certain to be a, a rallying point for all manner of malcontents. Therefore, Elizabeth was obliged, obliged to keep her gaze strictly confined and thus began a kaleidoscope of intrigues, a glass that was to span almost two decades. Eventually, Mary continued sedition, left Elizabeth no other alternatives. Mary was executed in 1587. James VI, Mary's son by Lord Burnley, who had been king of Scotland since 1568, under the regency of the Earl of Murray, was heard a Protestant. He was taught Calvinistic theology, Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Uh, Jimmy was quite a student. He could discourse all theological subjects in both English and Latin. When Elizabeth died, she left no heirs, thus ending the house of Tudor. James VI was brought down from Scotland and crowned James I of England, beginning the reign of the house of the squire. The, the millenary petition. The year was 1603. James had led an uneasy life in Scotland and actually looked forward to coming to England. However, he soon found that England too had its troubles. The Puritans were in revolt against the established church. 1,000 Puritan preachers had gathered together to write a petition. They besieged his noble majesty and parliaments for a change in the established church.
church service and the uh, removal of such superstitious a sign of the cross. Furthermore, the Puritans refused to use the prescribed prayer prayer book because of its corrupted translations. <clears throat> this petition became known in history as the Milenary Petition because of the because of the thousand signatures affects to it. It resulted in the Hapston Court uh, Conference on January 14, 1603, over which King James himself presided. It was during one of the endless debates that the leader of the Puritans, John Reynolds, says, said, May your majesty be pleased that the Bible be new translated. Such as such are extant, not answering to the original. Immediately, Reynolds' request ran into opposition for Bancroft, the Bishop of London. The Bishop claimed that if all who wish were permitted to come up with translation, the country would be swamped with Bible. So the talks dragged on. The Royal Order ordered for a uniform translation. Finally, the King of England grew weary. Listening to the debates in Parliament, he sided firmly with Reynolds in favor of a new Bible. He admitted that he had never yet seen a Bible well translated into English, and he wished that some special pains were taken for a uniform translation done by the base learned of both universities. Lastly, ratified by a royal authority to be read in the whole church and no other. James was vitally interested in theology and in language. He was knowledgeable in the scriptures and in Bible doctrine. Besides, the thought that a new and better translation of the Bible should be published during his reign appealed to James tremendously. He made but one condition. He would handpick the translators himself. Although the new translations had his complete backing and would eventually be ratified by him, he did not contribute one penny toward its expense. It is said to have cost 3,500 pounds sterling and considerable sum in those days. Appointment of the Translators On July 22, 1604, the king announced that he had appointed 54 men to make the new translation. How did, how did he select the scholars? His only requirement was, the, was that they must be good linguists. Half of them were Hebrew experts and the other half experts in Greek. The list included Angelicans and Puritans, <coughs> believers and unbelievers. Of those selected, seven men died before work was begun, including John Reynolds, who had asked for his translation. <coughs> Actually, only, 40, only, only 47 men worked on, worked on what we call today the authorized or King James version of the Bible. It was a perfect time for the translation to be undertaken for the English language had been greatly improved by men like Shakespeare, Don and Spencer. Classic <laughs> literature had reached its peak. The beauty of English English language of, of that today and its power of expression are thus preserved for us in the King James Bible. Thus a style of language which would otherwise belong outdate, outdated has come down to us pressed and with expression of some words. 
very much to the point. Personally, I love thundering diction of King James Version. The work begins. The scholars were divided into six teams. Two teams work at Oxford, two at Cambridge, and two at Westminster, with a work portion among them. In each of the groups, the teams were further broken down into an Old Testament team and the New Testament team. All work independently of each other. That explains, of course, why the word pneuma was translated spirit in one place and ghost in another. <laughs> it was simply a matter of the spirit decorps. The school spirit, the Westminster group used ghost, and the Oxford group used spirit. It's put down what he preferred one of the teams work entirely on the apocrypha, which, as you know, is no longer included in the King James Version of the Bible. Source, sources of translation. The terms transla translating the Old Testament was the Masoric, Masoric. Mas Masoretic texts as their source. Work on this text had begun in the 5th, uh, 15th, 5th century AD and was completed in 1425. It was an accurate rendition of original Hebrew uh, scriptures. For the Greek, the textus receptus, the text received by all, was used. This edition was based on a 10th century manuscript that had been put out by Erasmus of Rotterdam in 1560 and established by El Elzeber in its second edition. A Latin prefix, prefix containing the words textum receptum had been printed from which it apparently received its name. The work completed. It took the scholars three years to finish their work of translating the Bible, and an additional nine months to revise the text and put it together. To everyone's satisfaction, the old ecclesiastical words of the bishop's Bible of 1568 were all retained. Surely, Four years or least in not too long for a work of such magnitude. The preface says, matters of such weight and consequence are to be speeded with maturity. For in business of moment, a man fareth not the blame of convenient slackness. All in all, the 16, the 1611 edition was a good translation from the manuscripts that were the available the majestic Anglo-Saxon, with its clarity and style, its, direct, its directness and force have made the King James Bible an English classic and a model for hundred years. The reception of the King James Bible, yet upon its release, the authorized version turned out to be most unpopular and universally condemned translation that had ever come out uh, come out of the printing press. It caused the biggest ruckus ever raised ever on edition of the Bible in the English speaking world. Some criticism was unjust uh, was justified because in the process of printing over 400 uh, typographical errors were made which had to be corrected. For the most part, however, the, uh, the criticism was unfounded and biased. The Catholic condemned it, uh, condemned it for favoring the Protestant. The, Aram, Arami, the Armenians thought it favors Calvinistic, Calvinicism. The Calvinists Claims claim that it 
uh, favored Armenians. The Puritans objected to the church politely and the ritual as well as the use of such word as bishop. Church ordained an Easter. In short, every, everyone who considered himself to be an expert on the subject screamed in protest and began to write pamphlets condemning the new version of the Bible. Well, uh, mga kaisuna, no? uh, atong time in sakto na yun para sa sunod na itong sesyon. Atong ipadayong tinin the reception of the King James Bible. No? Dili na kita sa sunod nga uh, Sabado, atong tiwason kini siya. Hangtod na napurma yun ang itawag na itong King James, King James Bible. No? So, uh, anong sa kita sa itong ikaduhang abuduha itong? mao ang paghatag uh, ng usap sa maayong balita na ito sa mga kaisunan na alagkinanlan ng kaluwasan. So, hindi kita karoon sa dalang sa kaluwasan. Si Jesus ngayon sa 1.14.6 Ako mawawandan ang kamaturan ng ang kinabuhit. Walay bisang kinsa na makaato sa amahan. Gawas kong muagi kanako. Si Jesus lamang ang dalang tayong sa amahan. Huwag din niyo sa kita makadirit sa samahan na kinanglan ng muhalit kita sa dalan ng mao si Heso Kristo. Si Heso Kristo lamang ang buktong dalan na rin kita maluwas o wala na ilain pa. Sa mga buhat ka trudo si B na ginun, kayo wala di sanunsa pang laing ngalan sa silong sa langit ng yatag na ito sa mga tao na pinahagi nini maluwas kita. Si Heso Kristo lamang ang nagpakamatay sa Cross, busang niyang buhat lamang ang magkaluwas ka na ito o dili ang atong mayong buhat. Ang Tito 3.5 na gingon, giluwas kita niya, kini din itungod sa bisanunsang mayong atong nabuhat, kundi din itungod sa iyang kaluoy. <coughs> giluwas kita niya, kinagi sa paghugas ka na ito. Anong kita matawag pag-usap, huwag makabatong o bagong kinabuhi, diya sa Espiritu Santo. May upat ka punto, importante kayo na itong masagtan. Unang punto, ang kaluwasan dili mabayran sa bahandi o bulawan. Tininig ko sa mga kung isang tulikaw pa ang pinagkadato sa kalimutan, ang imong bahandi o bulawan, walay mahimo o tinig magkabayan, makapalit alang sa imong kaluwasan. Ang bahandi o bulawan, walay mahimo alang sa kaluwasan sa tao. Bisang ganyan si Jesus, dili bahandi o bulawan ang niyang dibayan, arong kita iyang maluwas. Mabasa na ito ka na sa unong tito o unong disotso na ito sa bisimilbi nga nagingon. Nasahid ka mo, may ibayad, anong pagluwas ka ninyo, gikan sa dautang pagkinabuhi, ng inyong nasunod sa inyong mga katigulangan. Bili, butang na kawadan o bili, sa masasalap ni Ikulawan. Giluwas ka mo sa bilirong lugo ni Kristo, kinsa sama sa nating karnero, walay guling o mansa. Ikaduang punto, ang reliyon dili makaluwas sa tao. Gihimo kini sa tao ng pamagi sa pagkabot sa Diyos, pinagi sa pagkarelyoso, pagkamatarong sa paggalingon, pagsunod sa mga balaod, moralidad, seremonyas o daghan pa. Apan kini, boy na kong lingla sa atong kaaway nga si Satanas, aron ang tao ng bati ng murag luwas na sila tungod kay nagsunod sila sa mga pagtulunan, balaod o mga seremonyas sa reliyon, apan kini, nagalipat lamang sa tao aron dili makita ang tatao o klaro nga paagi sa kaluwasan nga pinaagi lamang sa pagtuo sa buhat ni Jesus dito sa krus. Nini, nagtinguha ang tao sa pagbuhat o maayo aron maluwas. Nagsalig sa ilang kaugaling o panitamot o kuso. Tungod ni ini, dili nila makita ang kasigurduhang dalan sa kaluwasan na mao ang pagtuo lamang sa buktong buhat ni Jesus. O sa kakumpletong pananglitan mao pinikon mga tanah kita, luwas ka na ba? Sila mo tubag, kung magbuhat o maayo, Kinitungod, kaya ilang una-una, mauman ang pagtuong ang ilang maayong buhat, mao ang makaluwas kanila. Natapta ni Satanas ang ilang mga mata araw dili makita ang buhat ni Jesus <coughs> na mao ang buktong dalan sa kaluwasan. Igala ang reliyon dili makaluwas. O ang pagpamimbro sa reliyon dili makaluwas. Ang buktong makaluwas mao si Jesus lamang. Si Jesus mingon sa Juan 14.6, Ako mao ang dalan, ang kamatuuran o ang kinabuhi. Walay bisan kinsa na makaadto sa amahan. Gawas kon mo agi ka na ko. 
Ikatulong punto. Ang kaluwasan din buhat sa tao. Ang Tito 3.5 ay nagingon, Giluwas kita niya, kini din itungod sa bisan-usang maayong atong mabuhat, kundi din itungod sa iyang kaluwan. Sa episode ng Sokso Ognay, Diyosab nagingon, kay pinagi sa pagtuo, naluwas ka mong tungod sa grasya sa Diyos, dili kini inyong buhat, kundi din gasa sa Diyos. Bosa walay magkapasigar mo ni ini sa ngitli ng kinibunga sa inyong mga panikamot. Bosa kini nagpasabot ng kaluwasan dili kay buhat sa tao. Ang kaluwasan dili tungod sa atong panikamot, ang kaluwasan dili tungod sa atong pagkarelihiyoso, ang kaluwasan dili tungod sa tawahan ng pagmataron. Kundi ang kaluwasan purely buhat sa Diyos, pinagi sa Espirituhan ng kamatayon ng Tres Pisos dito sa cross. Ngayon ang mayong buhat sa tao dili man makaluwas. Tungod kayang tanang mayong buhat sa tao sa malamang sa mahugaw ng trapo sa mata sa Diyos. Ang Isaiah 64, size B, nagingon, o kang tanan na po ang pagkamatarong sa malamang sa mahugaw ng trapo. Ngano ka ang asama man lamang sa mahugaw ng trapo? Pinitungod kay bunga man lamang sa atong daang kinaiyang magkasasala. O kang atong daang kinaiyang magkasasala, di ikayang makaluwas ka na to o magkapamatarong ka na to. Sa Roma 2.30 din ito sa Tantay Ulo na dinon, ang nilin mga hudiyo na wala pa ng kamot na may mong matarong kumbangan sa Diyos, na kapatong hinoon, hindi mo ang pagkamatarong pinagis pagtuo. Samtang ang Israel na nang kamot, aron na ibo silang matarong pinagis pagtuman sa balawod, wala inoon mo lang pos. Kininit pa sa buk na nilin na tukay ang magmatarong pinagis sa atong buwan. O sa usap ko ilado ang teksto sa Biblia na makita sa Matthew City 21 at 23 na naging mong Dili ang tanan magkainan ka na ko ginoo-ginoo, makasulot si Gingarian sa langit, kundi dili ang nagatuman sa kabubutong sa akong amahan na naa sa langit. Ngano ka na dili man makasulot si Gingarian sa langit, ngayon ka nagpropesya man sila sa ngalan sa ginoo, na nagpagula sa yawa at pinagin siya ang ngalan, kung nakahimok pa o gagang ang milagro tungon sa iyang ngalan, tungod kay dili dili mao ang pamahagi sa kaluwasan. Dili tungod nini nga buhat ng maluwas ang tao, kaya ang kaluwasan hindi buhat sa tao, hindi buhat sa Diyos. At sa mati ang kabubutong sa Diyos, ang kabubutong sa Diyos at tumakita ay sa 1.40 na ilingon. Kaya ang kabubutong sa atong mamahal na utili, nga matagusa, nga magkita sa anak, at musalik ka niya, magkabatong sa tinaguhin gayon, o pagkabanhaw ng kusiyas, kaulayan ng atlaw. Bautili ang buktong kabubutong sa amahan, aron ang tao maluwas, ang pagtuo sa anak, ng mga Kristo. Ikaw pat na punto, nagkinang lang kita o manuluwas na walay sala. O ka na, maulamang si Iso Kristo. Siya lamang ang buktong makaluwas ka na to. Siya lamang ang walay sala na nagpakamatay sa krus aron mabayran ang tanan na itong sala. Siya lamang ang atong manuluwas o dili kita makaluwas sa atong kaugalingon. Usa ka maulaw kung kita mo yun na kita maluwas tungo sa atong maayong buhat o pagkamatarong? Katubitaw mga pariseyo na nagpakamatarong sa ilang kaugalingon yung pinagi sa pagsunod sa mga balaod sa daang tuhugod? Gingnan mo sila ni Jesus diya sa Matthew 23-27. Alaot ka mo mga skriba o mga pariseyo, mga maut, kaysama ka mo sa, mga, sa pinaputi nga panutsyon na sa gawas mo nagpakita sa katahom, Apan sa sunod, kini sila puno sa mga mukog, sa mga patay, ang tanang kaugawan. Kini nagpasabot lamang na ang atong pagkamatarong dili madawat sa Diyos. Kini nagpasabot na ang tawahan ng pagkamatarong dili makaluwas sa tao o dili makahatag nato sa kinabuhi ni Dayon. Pinoon, kini magadala nga ito sa kamatayon na walay katapusan pagkahimulag sa Diyos dito sa linaw na talayo. Busa ang gala. Sabta kini. Ang buhat sa tao, dili magkaluwas sa atong kalan. <clears throat> ang pagkarelyoso, ang pagsunod sa balaod, ang pagkamatarong sa pagalingon, o ang pagpamimbro sa reliyon. Kining tanan, dili magkaluwas ka na ito. Kung dili, ang buktong buhat ni Kristo sa krus, maulamang ang magkaluwas ka na ito. Tungod kay buhat ni Kristo lamang ang hindi. Busa, tuuhin na si Jesus, ngayon mo maluluwas o maluwas ka. Kaya ang buhat ni si Sais na tayo nung nagingon, Tumuo ka, kang ginong Hesus, o maluwas ka, lakip ang imong panimalay. Balik ko na ko, Panginoon, dili ang buhat sa tao ang magaluwas. Ang buhat sa tao, dili madawat sa mata sa Diyos, bisan unsa man pili ka, maayong pagkamataro. 
Inibunga lamang sa daang kinayang magkasasala. Kaya ang Roma 8-8 nagingon, ang tao nga nagkinabuhi sumala sa tauhanong kinaya, dili gayod magkapahimuot sa Diyos. Busa, ay kaupat nga punto lamang ang sulba dini. Ang buktong Diyos nung buhat lamang ang makaluwas sa tao. O kana, mao lamang ang perfecto hingpit na buhat ni so Kristo sa krus, siya ang nagtubos ka na to. Sa unang Pedro 2.24, nagkana yun, siya mao ang midala sa atong mga sala diha sa iyang lawas na to sa kahoy. Aron kita mamatay na to sa sala o mabuhi na to sa pagkamatarong, pinaagi sa iyang masamad, kamu na nga ayon. Sa unang Pedro 1.18-19, nagkana yun, Nasayon ka mo na ang gibayad aron pagluwas ka ninyo gikan sa dautang pagkinabuhi ng inyong nasunod sa inyong mga katigulangan. <coughs> Diligab butang na kawad ano bili sama sa salapin o bulawan. Iluwas ka mo sa bili ng dugo ni Kristo. Insasama sa nating karnero, walay puli ng umansa. <coughs> ang Tito 3.5a usab na ka na yun. Ita ay ang iluwas bili tungod sa mga, buta, uh, sa mga binuhatan nato sa atong pagkamataro. Kundili tungod sa iyang kaluwag. Si Kristo nagkantos dito sa cross. Siya gibiay-biay, siya gilagmalan, siya gipaspalahan, siya gikorunahan ang tunog, siya gilangang sa cross. Labaw sa tanan ang atong tanan sa lahat, gitungtong sa iyang abaga. Gigang sa alas dosi sa auto hangtod sa alas tres sa hapon. Tulog ka oras ang pagbayad ni Kristo sa tanan natong sa lahat. O gumanini siya ninyon na tapos na. Makita na ito ka na diya sa 1.30. Mau ka na ang Espirituhanong pagkamatay ni Jesus. Di siya nahimulag sa Diyos Amahan o Diyos Espiritu. Tungon kay nahimu siyang sadan. Pilat ka bilyon o trilyon bakha ng mga sala sa tanang katawang sa kalibutan. Gitungtong sa iyang abaga. O gipasangil ka niya. Busa si Jesus nahimung sadan. Pagtungod niya na ang Diyos ng Amhan, o Diyos ng Espiritu, o nga walay kalipay sa sala, may biya ka niya. May hindi nga panahon, si Jesus may singgit o minun. Diyos ko, Diyos ko, nga nung nibiyaan mo ako. Nibiyaan si Jesus sa Diyos ng Amhan, o Diyos ng Espiritu, tungod kay nahimun siya ng sadan. Ang tanang sala sa katawang sa kalibutan, ang naa ka niya, tungod niya ni si Jesus na kabaton ng Espiritu, hanong kamatayon, sunod sa tulong kaoras. Mau kini ang nagkaluwas ka na to, ang buktong buhat ni Kristo sa cross, sa pagtubos o pagluwas ka na to. Dili ang atong buhat ang nagkaluwas, makaulaw kayo kung ang tao mo inun, na maluwas siya tungo sa iyang buhat, o maluwas siya tungo kay matarong siya. Kana may usak kapagpasipala sa buhat ni Yesus, sa marang mingun siya na dili pa ilo ang buhat ni Yesus sa cross. Apan si Yesus mingun na tapos na, titilis tayo. Makita ka na, diya sa Juan 19.30, buhati pa sa buhat na hindit na, o wala na'y dapat idugan ang tao kaya matapos na ni Jesus. Ang tao, ito na lang mutuo sa buhat ni Jesus, aron siya maluwas. Busa si Jesus minun, diya sa Juan 11.25-26, ako mo ang pagkabanaw kang kinabuhi, ang musalit ka na ko, bisan siya mamatay, magbuhi siya. Kung ang tanay na buhi, kung nagasalit ka na ko, hindi na gayon mamatay. Mutuo ba kita nini? O kung mutuo kita na mabuhi kita, maluwas kita o magkabaton kita sa kinabuhin tayo. Ang 1.3.16 na ito sa Lisi Otso na ginoon, kay gihigong magayon sa Diyos ang kalibutan, nga tungot niya na ihatag niya ang iyang buktong anak. Aron ang tanay ng musalig ka niya, hindi niya malaglag, kundi niya may kinabuhin tayo. Kay ipadala sa Diyos ang iyang anak ng inis kalibutan, Dili aron ang kalibutan niyang pagkahukman sa silo, kundi dili aron ang kalibutan maluwas pinagi ka niya. Ang usalit ka niya, dili pagkahukman sa silo, at ang dili usalit ka niya, hinukman na sa silo, kaya wala nun siya magtuo sa ngalan sa anak sa Diyos. O sa Psalm 1.3.36a na ginun, ang usalit sa anak, may kinabuhit nga dayon. Busa higala kung nasalta niyo ng tinikaroon, ayaw na palabay kini ng panahon. Tumuho ka na, kang ginoong Isos. Huwag maluwas ka. Mga buhat ni si Sais 31. Pinagi lamang sa inyong una-una, pumutuo ka kung Isos, maluwas ka. Bisan sa usa lamang kasigundo. Si Isos mingon, pumutuo ka mo kanako, dilipugayid ka mo, isalikway. Juan Sais 32. Sa Juan 1.12 usab na ginon, 
Apan sa tanang nidawat kaniya, sa tanang ito sa iyang alam, kanila naghatag siya kagahum sa pagkahimong anak sa Diyos. Busa ito kay Jesus Karunigala, maukini ang pinakamaayong desisyon sa iyong kinabuhi, nga magdala kanimo sa kinabuhi nga iyon, kauban sa Diyos. Kung buod ka ng mudawat kang binuong Jesus, sundan kining yano ng pagampo. Kini nga pagampo sama lang na ikaw, nagabuhan sa iyo ng pinuod na pagtuo o pagsanay na ito sa Diyos. Amahal ni Diyos, ako nagatuo na kang Kristo Jesus, igon nga akong binuo o maluluwas. Salamat sa iyo ng pagluwas ka na ko, o paghimo ka na ko ng iyong anak. Tabang niya ko sa pagsunod ka niyo sa matagadlaw ng pagsinaguli. Timuha ko na tao na iyong mahimutan, kini akong ipangayo, o ginaampo, pinagi lamang sa pangalan ni Yeso Cristo. Akong ginoo at manluluwas. Amen. Igala, kung ikaw nagampo ni Nicaron, sa marang ikaw ng tuon at ang Christ Jesus, ikaw na luwas na sumala sa Tito 3.5, Episodos 8.9, Buhat ni Sisayas 31. Ikaw na iyon ang anak sa Diyos, sumala sa 1.12, o ikaw ananak ang Kristo, o si Kristo anana sa inyong tinaguli. 1.14. Wala naman yun tayo panahon. Busa na nangit na kami kaninyo, hangtod sa sunod higayon, sa samang oras, alas 12.30 hangtod sa alas 4 sa hapon, at lang sa balo. O samang istasyon, uh, People's Radio and Broadcasting Services, 9727 FM Radio, Bringing Christian Faith to Life. O mo sa pagdumala ni Pastor Mike News, o sa iyang kaabag, Did you well? Ang atong programa, ang kahibulungan ng plano sa Diyos, manamilip na kalinyo, kiniang ninyo mga alagad sa kahanginan, Pastor Federico Andoy, Pastor Uel Galio, Magaingon, ang Diyos, Magkauban, Kanatong Tanan. Bye-bye. Bye. Mayong hapon.